Hello everyone and welcome back to the Vulnerability Hangover. I'm your host Nikki and this is Enzo, our emotional support dog, if you can see him on the video portion of the podcast. So today I wanted to start off the 10 episodes with kind of a three-part series. I'm going to break them up in different episodes. I think it's really important to talk about healing and I think there's lots of things that we all can heal from. For me specifically, the most important one that I'm working on is healing from intimate relationships. So not friendships, but past relationships that I've had with intimate partners in specific. So today we are drinking a sparkling kiwi guava Celsius. This is one of my favorite caffeinated drinks. If you know me, I'm either drinking a Celsius, poppy, or an iced oat milk vanilla latte. (laughs) I also wanted to start off this podcast with an affirmation. I got this lovely little affirmation slash gratitude card deck. I have a couple of these, but this is my newest one, and I want to pull out an affirmation that I feel like would go with this podcast today, so I'm going to randomly select one. Alrighty, I am grateful to be able to enjoy all the little things in my life. I love that. So that's the little affirmation for today. And let's get into this episode. So remember how I said in the introduction how I felt like this podcast launch felt like divine timing? It really has. This episode is going to be about healing and why healing is never linear. Let's get into it. So the idea for this episode was already planned, but I wasn't expecting it to be my first episode of the 10, but the timing just is so perfect. So like I mentioned, I am going to have like a multi-part series when it comes to my healing journey and other healing aspects in my life, but this one in particular is going to be about intimate relationships and how I'm healing from intimate relationships. I want to say that I fully subscribe to the theory that people in your life are you pushed out, so people are your mirrors, and what you do or say or energetically say, they will reflect back to you. I recently got out of a really long relationship back in April, and I've been kind of like going through the healing journey with that, but most recently I got out of, I don't want to call it a situationship, but it was kind of like a situationship I wouldn't even call it a rebound because I really enjoyed this person and it was someone that I knew for a while. Overall, I don't think this experience was bad whatsoever. I just think that there's a lot of things that I still need to heal from regarding my past relationship that was so long and this other person needs to do the same thing as well it just didn't work out but still care a lot about this person i think it was like a huge learning experience for me because it reminded me that i still have a lot of wounds that need to be tending to before i get into a fully committed relationship the process of getting into a relationship or rather earning the title of being a girlfriend brought up a lot of things from my past there were a lot of behaviors that i displayed in the early stages of the relationship that I thought I had addressed, but I didn't because I hadn't been in a relationship. And sometimes you think you've healed from things, but it's because you're single and you haven't gone through those experiences with another person. Like I went on dates with people, but I wasn't like getting intimate with them and like really getting down to the nitty gritty stuff and wanting to be in a relationship with them. It was more so just like, oh, this guy asked me out on a date, sure, I'll go and hang out with him, whatever. With this relationship in specific, I was really interested in this person. It's very rare for me to be super interested in a person, and usually when I'm super interested in a person, I jump right in and I'm like, okay, I want to be in a relationship with them. I know immediately if I'm going to connect with a person within like our first date. I also have a tendency to throw myself into relationships full force and I love way too hard. I'm a huge sucker for love. I mean, I'm a Pisces after all and romance 
is everything. I romanticize literally everything in my life, but this tendency isn't healthy, especially in the beginning stages of a relationship, regardless of how long you've known this person. When you take the next step to being girlfriend, boyfriend, 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 girlfriend, girlfriend, solidifying that title, it's best to take it slow and take things one day at a time because people change immediately when you get into different stages of relationships, whether it's moving in together or earning the title of boyfriend, girlfriend, getting engaged, although I don't know what it's like to be engaged or married, but still, I think every stage people are constantly changing and it's just best to take it day by day. I also find myself almost losing myself to another person and starting to put their needs before my own. This was a huge issue when it came to my identity in my last relationship. I felt like when I got into a relationship with him, I completely lost my identity and I was just so-and-so's girlfriend and that's never a good thing. I think you need to have your own identity regardless of what title you have in the relationship, wife, husband, anything like that. One thing I do want to pat myself on the back with is when it comes to communication, I used to consistently stonewall when it came to like disagreements or stuff like that. Like I would immediately shut down when things were either not going my way or if I didn't like something, I would just have this assumption that they would know immediately what they did was wrong or they would know immediately why I was upset, which is just a completely unhealthy way of communicating. With this short relationship that I had, I learned to immediately communicate when something really bothered me. I think it's good to be assertive, but also taking a second to think about it and frame it in a way where the other person will receive it positively. And it really helps when your partner is understanding and corrects the behavior instead of immediately blaming you and going for your throat. I've experienced that in my past and it's just completely unhealthy and will make me almost go back into my shell. I also think that you can heal in relationships. I also fully subscribe to every person in your life you have a soul contract with, whether they're in your life for a long period of time or whether they're in your life for a short period of time. My last relationship, I'll just go out and say it, was very unhealthy. We both really, really loved each other, but we both had so much stuff to work on that we almost were consistently butting heads and trying to learn how to navigate situations together and it was just like a constant struggle and relationships are never supposed to feel like that my last relationship taught me so much it taught me a lot about myself it taught me resiliency it taught me how to pick myself back up when i'm knocked down it taught me patience it taught me grace it taught me forgiveness which is so important i had such an issue with forgiving people i would hold grudges but after that relationship, I completely feel like it set me free to attract all this love into my life and understand and have empathy for other people because we're all learning. We're all trying to be the best versions of ourselves. I also don't blame the person for how they acted with me or how I acted with them because everything is a huge learning experience. There's so much stuff that comes with relationships and that's why I feel like relationships can heal you so much. There are so many things that I have learned from being in long-term relationships and short-term relationships and I feel like each relationship that I've been in has really reflected back to me things that I need to heal from and it's also taught me a lot about myself. I always feel like I'm the partner that loves the most or is like super involved into the relationship and like I said I tend to lose myself in relationships trying to make the other person happy so one thing that I'm definitely going to keep an eye on for my next relationship I'm going to make sure that I'm pouring into myself and this other person is pouring into themselves and we come together because 
we want to be together. With every relationship that I've had, I have learned a lot about myself and I've learned a lot of things that I would like from a partner, but there's also things that I've learned that I would never tolerate again with a partner. Everything in life is a learning experience and I try to approach it in that way, but I think relationships are vital. I think they're vital, period. They're so important and feeling loved not only from yourself but also from other people is a very beautiful thing and it's something that everyone should be able to experience. I don't think I've always been the best partner either. I definitely had an ego in my past relationships and I didn't want to be the one that needed to be changed. But I think if you're in a relationship, change is inevitable and you have to change to adapt to your environment, whether it's moving in with another person or taking the next step in the relationship. I never wanted to be the one that would change. I always wanted to have someone accept me for exactly who I was. But did I accept myself exactly for who I was? I didn't. I still felt like there was things that I needed to work on. I was just in denial and my ego was like, no, you're not the one that needs to change. This other person needs to change to adapt to how you are. And that's unhealthy, especially when you're coming into a relationship. Both people need to come in and be the best version of themselves for themselves and the other person. And I know I'm emphasizing so much on pouring into yourself before pouring into another person, but if you are giving from an empty cup, how is that person going to be able to receive that love and support? They're not receiving that stuff from you because you're pouring from an empty cup. I think a lot of times it's hard for people to come to terms with, I'm also the problem in a relationship. I think a lot of people will want to go and blame the other person. I certainly have been like that. When you're coming together as two people, you need to learn how to work with one another and how to further improve the relationship. I also am a huge advocate for couples counseling, but I am also a huge advocate for couples who are coming together or if they're already in a relationship, been in a relationship for a long time. I think everyone should read this book. It's called Eight Dates. It's Essential Conversations for a Lifetime of Love. It's by John Gottman and Julie Swartz Gottman. This book has been so important when it comes to my approach with relationships. Whoever I'm with has to be open to reading this book again with me because it has so much good information and conversations that I think everyone needs to have in a relationship. In order to grow together, you need to be able to learn how to have all sorts of conversations, whether it's good, bad, religious views, political views, stuff like that. There's a lot that goes into coming together as one. I don't like saying coming together as one because I still feel like you need to be two individuals, but I guess coming together and creating that container of love and create something beautiful. In past relationships, I needed almost constant reassurance, and I am very happy to say I don't need reassurance because I know how to reassure myself, and I do it so much that my partners want to give me that love right back because people are your mirrors. If I'm telling myself I love you, I cherish you, I care so much about you and really pour into myself, my partners are going to want to do that as well. Going into a relationship where you're super extremely insecure about yourself, that can lead to a lot of issues. I know for me when I was going through situations where I was extremely insecure, it pushed my partner away because they didn't know how to help me with those insecurities because that's something that I need to work on on my own. And I'm not saying, oh, don't be insecure. No, we're always going to have insecurities, but when you acknowledge them and learn how to cope with those insecurities, it helps a lot so it doesn't put all the baggage onto your partner. Like I said earlier, there was some wounds that I needed tending to before I get into a fully committed relationship. I really need to work on. I have a tendency to be kind of controlling and that's something that I don't like. I catch myself doing it and I know why. It's because I'm so cautious when it comes to my heart and my love for people and I care a lot so I have a tendency to want to take the lead and 
control certain things instead of going with the flow which completely takes me out of my feminine energy and puts me in my masculine whenever i feel like i have to go and control a certain situation that's a huge red flag for me another wound that i need to be tending to is i can be slightly codependent in my past i have had issues with codependency which is kind of what leads me to losing my identity with this person and I really lean into them for every single thing and that's so much pressure to put on your partner. One person can't give you every single thing in the world and why would you expect that from someone anyways? You need to be able to provide for yourself before you get that from a partner and I'm not saying that your partner can't give you those things but you need to be able to provide that for yourself first. Another unhealthy thing that I feel like I do a lot of the times with my relationships is give people the benefit of the doubt way too easy. I am a very forgiving person, but sometimes me being so forgiving, I have a tendency to completely ignore the red flags. There's certain things that I can tolerate, but when it's like repeated behavior and they're not doing anything to change it, sometimes I have a tendency to just allow it. What you tolerate in the beginning, whether it's small or big, you are 100% teaching them how to treat you. Boundaries are so important. I think there's stuff that you should talk about before getting into a relationship with a person. In the first beginning stages, I think you need to be focusing on how does this person make me feel? What are the good qualities in this person and what are the bad qualities and are the bad qualities something that I can tolerate? Because you're not going to think every single thing about a person is perfect. There comes a time when you are starting to tolerate too much and it's time to really sit the person down and be like, hey, can we fix this? And if not, we need to go our separate ways. The earlier you catch the issues that you have a hard time dealing with and fixing them, the better off you are. And what you don't work on from your past relationships, you're going to get in the next relationship. Whether you're with someone who's emotionally unavailable, you really need to take a look at, hey, am I also emotionally unavailable and how do I make myself emotionally available for the next person how am I going to attract that kind of partner in my life I know who I want to be as a partner all I really want to be is loving and caring and like a little cheerleader for this person I want to be someone that my partner is proud of I want to be someone that my partner is proud to be with and I'm not saying my partners in the past weren't proud of being with me but I want to continue to be the best version of myself so I can show up like that in my next relationship but I also want to have an identity outside of the relationship and the type of partner that I want I want someone that's extremely supportive I want someone who's ambitious and a go-getter I want someone who cares a lot about other people I don't care how much money this person makes. I don't care what they look like. At the end of the day, looks fade. So having a kind heart is something that's extremely important to me. I am going to look for that in my next partner 100%. If they have a good heart and they treat me the way I treat myself, maybe even better than I treat myself, that's the type of person that I want to be with. But I also think it takes a lot to be the right person to be in a relationship with. I also think that when you attract certain partners, it kind of reflects relationships that you had in your childhood. So let's say you have a super controlling parent. Sometimes you will attract that sort of partner. I absolutely cannot tolerate in any sort of relationship, whether it's friendships or intimate partner relationships. I cannot stand when people try it and control me and I actively try to not be a controlling partner because I know that you just push the other person away when you do something like that. When someone tries to control me, it makes me not want to do what they asked or it makes me want to do the complete opposite. Other things I do not tolerate in relationships are name calling, 
yelling i think once it gets to that point where you start calling someone names and you start yelling at them there's no real going back because you've completely disrespected that person and it really shows that you have no respect for that person after those things come out of your mouth you can't just like put a band-aid over it when it starts getting heated it's best to just take a pause and go your separate ways for a little bit until you can collect yourself and come back and have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Like I said earlier, there was some wounds that I needed tending to before I get into a fully committed relationship. I really need to work on. I have a tendency to be kind of controlling and that's something that I don't like. I catch myself doing it and I know why. It's because I'm so cautious when it comes to my heart and my love for people and I care a lot. So I have a tendency to want to take the lead and control certain things instead of going with the flow which completely takes me out of my feminine energy and puts me in my masculine whenever i feel like i have to go and control a certain situation that's a huge red flag for me another wound that i need to be tending to is i can be slightly codependent in my past i have had issues with codependency which is kind of what leads me to losing my identity with this person and I really lean into them for every single thing and that's so much pressure to put on your partner one person can't give you every single thing in the world and why would you expect that from someone anyways you need to be able to provide for yourself before you get that from a partner and I'm not saying that your partner can't give you those things but you need to be able to provide that for yourself first. What does a healthy relationship look like to me? A healthy relationship is when two people come together. For me, I'm a monogamous person, so I can't speak for people who are polyamorous or anything, but for me, it's when two people come together and have so much love for themselves that there's like an excess amount of love that they can pour into this relationship. I think there's a lot that goes into healthy relationships and it's not always easy, but if you feel like you're with the right person, it shouldn't be extremely hard. Communication is essential. There's healthy ways to communicate and there's unhealthy ways to communicate as well. What I mean by healthy communication is let's say you're in a disagreement with a partner and there's something that is really bothering you i don't think you should react on emotion and just say you did this and go in blaming this person i think it's important to go into the disagreement or conversation saying when you said this it really hurt my feelings because of this going in and accusing the person is never a good thing because it just puts people's guards up i also think that when you're in a relationship you need to allow space for a person to grow and work on things people grow best in an environment that is full of love and care instead of being accusatory or judgmental when it comes to a person having issues i think it's good to approach it and be like how can i help you navigate this issue that we are having how can i be of service to you and that's not giving up a part of yourself it's learning how to mesh with another person and you have to pick what battles you actually want to fight for but it shouldn't be extremely hard i think everything that you would do for your partner you need to be doing for yourself whether it's you want to go on a date with your partner i think you need to be taking yourself out on dates too it's like little things not everyone's going to go and take themselves out on a date but what you're pouring into your partner you need to be pouring into yourself first that's why they say put your oxygen mask on before you help other people because if you aren't able to put your oxygen mask on how are you gonna be able to help others put their oxygen mask on if i could give anyone advice on how do I attract the right partner. I think it's just really focusing on yourself and rather than focusing on the end goal, which is like being with this person. So pour all that love that you would normally pour into another person into yourself. That's something that I've really been trying to do and it's worked so far. Like I've attracted a lot of different people. Not everyone works out, but 
I've attracted friendships and relationships. What you put into yourself, good or bad, is what you're going to have reflected back to you by the people that are in your life. I'm going to continue to work hard on who I want to be for myself and my next partner and continue to heal so that one day I will find the right person. There's a lot of stuff I need to work on before I get into it and if I don't work on it now, it'll just show up again. Everything's a lesson. So that's the end of this episode, healing and relationships. I am going to make this a multi-part theory since this is part of my healing journey. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I can't wait for the next nine episodes. Please make sure you like, subscribe, follow, rate, review, wherever you listen to your podcasts. I am going to start doing a Patreon. I'm kind of in the works with that. The really difficult episodes will be up on there and you guys can subscribe to that. Be sure to tune in to my next episode and follow the Instagram so you can be prepared on what the next episode is going to be like. And thank you so much for tuning in. I love you guys. Remember to be kind to one another and love yourself. I know that's easier said than done, but at the end of the day, all you really have is yourself. So pour into yourself and the rest will follow. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.